resurrection, addressing men's health. It's going to be coming up pretty soon. And something's important about the next lecture. I'm actually going to the Novi Library. This is going to be the last one here at the Sheraton. The cost difference is absolutely incredible. So I'm going to actually pull over to the library because that's where Jeff's been doing it. And it probably at this point in my career would be a smart move. <clears throat> surprise, surprise, surprise. It's, that can go a lot of places. Mayo Health. Now, I'm flabbergasted at the men. I am flabbergasted in my personal life at the men. If you're older, when I go through something happen to the guys, the hormones are train wrecking the men. Jeff's going to cover that, and I would encourage you, for especially the guys, to learn how to play this properly. We have lots of video appointments available just because people are watching the lectures and very frustrated with the kind of care that they're getting today, which is why I fired the pediatrician when I was like 12. Our protocols and supplements, there's some what we use and where our website can be found at. About two weeks ago, this little girl came in to get adjusted before a gymnastics contest. I was adjusting this little young lady. That is her hand. And her, she had this huge bandage on her hand. And her dad took that picture and said, what do you have for my daughter's hand? I said, nothing. I said, the girls, if you grab that stem cell stuff, throw that. There's her hand. My dad sent that picture. That was 18 hours later. Her body grew that much skin back from a stem cell. The parents couldn't believe That's expensive stuff. I am not selling her that. I just threw it on her hand and saw what would happen. And that was, now, that's how stem cells work. They grow stuff that you need. She needed skin. If she needed something else, she'd have grown that. Amazing. I am still continue to be blown away with this. Juan, I showed him, so we got a picture of the girl. Now, the shot is 1,200 times stronger than the bizarre case. I'm still trying to, we got that hand up in the office. It's just amazing. So they came in and got it, and I think she competed with a totally different hand in 24 hours. <clears throat> I watch the guys in hockey now are having lots of interesting things done. Their hips are being done, shoulders. I'm really going to avoid this at all costs. Now, we had a couple fellows in here. These guys are well-known. Jason and John came in, and I was filmed for a, a longevity project. These guys are directing this. This will be out soon. And they had all their stuff set up, and they contacted us, and you can kind of follow this up there. They interviewed lots of people, and <clears throat> they're going to put something together on longevity. And I really, when I talk about this stuff at this point in my career, People think there's a gimmick to longevity, and you have to be well-fed the whole way. It's funny, the gimmicks that you see online and in your mailbox is if there's some secret shortcut to living long. Now, I found this article kind of interesting in August because I grew up with a dad at a corporation. So we used corporate insurance. I could tell something was wrong when I was young because my friends didn't have corporate insurance and I was a lot sicker than my friends. So, so many, Lockheed Martin led the way. Do you know what it's like to reduce your retirement obligations $1.6 billion because all your retirees died? All the top 10 companies, are, General Motors is there, you got your colonoscopies, you got your flu shots, they scraped everything, they punched holes and everything. You're dying faster than you were before you did all that stuff. $1.6 billion Lockheed Martin saved. $1.6 billion. The companies are so happy because you're all croaking fast. And they're saving tons in the process. 
Here's a special question for a small group of people. How many people know who this guy is? Raise your hand if you know who this guy is. Look at, I want you to look around. Raise your hand if you know who this guy is. There's three people, four people in this room. Do you understand? He's the guy that saved the country, and not one of you know who his name is. <clears throat> Find out who he is. That's Admiral Mike Rogers. Everything going on came from him, and nobody even knows who he is. The entire country was saved because of that guy. You have no clue what he's done for this country. Not a clue. Three, four of you in this room. <clears throat> this is for the people that should be paying attention that aren't. They know exactly who they are. Four in this room. Lord have mercy. Now, the first time they hired this dude, this is exactly what crazy town looks like. He's gone. Roger Stone's talking about it. Jerome Corsi's talking about it. They, they put a guy with dementia in there. <laughs> the first time they hired him, this is the Pelosi eyeballs. There's guys in hockey I shake hands with. Through the, they look just like this. There's three or four. I can tell everybody who's losing their mind. And they're starting Since they brought this up online, what the heck? I said, Kelly, find me that Jeff Sessions far away look. That's what he looks like. And he's got to do something quick because he's going to forget what he's going to do soon. That's exactly the look that I look for. Absolutely lost in space. I want to do a shout out to these guys. These are those, this is Coward County, Florida. The cops that were hiding in the bushes while 17 kids got killed, 19 people were wounded. I think they should be immortalized on my video. Janice, you're a teacher. Can you imagine if all the cops were hiding in the bushes while the shooting was going on? Whatever that shooting was, we don't know yet. Incomprehensible. Those are the guys. We need to put them out there. Congratulations, you bunch of weenies. They had guns, and they hid in the corner while the kids were getting massacred. And then this guy got on TV and said, what a great job you did. Anybody see him tell everybody what a great job? He just did a masterpiece at this thing. I don't know what a bad job is. It's embarrassing what this country, men, Hiding in the bushes. I'd have taken a baseball bat in there, and my kids know I'd have taken a baseball bat in there. I still have a little testosterone left. <laughs> David. How many people have enjoyed David? I enjoyed this little meme, this little weenie on TV. My generation's going to start a revolution. Some guy put this online, and it was worth watching. Your generation can't start a lawnmower. <laughs> I want to see your kids fire up a lawnmower when it's cold. And if they think they can do that, the chainsaw is next, and I'm going to watch. <laughs> I'm going to watch. Admiral Mike Rogers, Lord have mercy. <clears throat> I had a, an English brother-in-law, which was fun because he's kind of weenie. This came across. The, the British were so afraid in 1940, November of 40, they ran an ad, send a gun to help defend the British. So they got together their pistols, their rifles, their revolvers and shotguns, and we sent them so that they could defend against the Germans. As soon as the war was over, do you know what they did? Huh? You know what they did? No. You know what they did? They're all getting stabbed at that this year. You know what they did? They threw everything in the ocean. <laughs> uh, this week, they just said, everybody's getting, more people were stabbed in England than were shot in New York City. They threw their guns in the ocean. That's why we have to keep defending them because... They just have knives and sticks. Unbelievable. Derek, this is where you and your lovely wife went to the Phoenix Center, the convention center. You're lucky you don't drink coffee because a biological male identified as a girl named Lauren was putting her birth control pills into the coffee at Starbucks. <sighs> Proudly admits to attending drugging attendees at a conservative conference. Proudly admits. Mm -hmm. 
that I said their moral compass is all broke. All, so today, I would pay attention what you're doing today. And I've had some interesting folks in my life, and I really try to make sure they're not in charge of important things that I do. Men's sperms counts are dropping, and the scientists don't know why. It's not the estrogen overload. It's a gigantic mystery to all of us. No one could possibly know. I like watching the little junior executives at lunch with the little pecking order at lunch in my little restaurants. Sperm count in men is a Western record low. Big mystery again. Men are crying on TV like never before. Isn't it fun? It's kind of fun to be this age and to feel like you're not really waning compared to the other people because they waned faster than I did and they're younger than me. This fella, now, here's, your, here's a 32-year-old guy who's having trouble getting his wife pregnant. Now, this is 7, 8 to 14. <clears throat> now, when I ran this test, I was about a 9, 5. I'm trying to push for like a 16 to see what I can get myself up to. You have no clue how low your kids are. I went over a 5 today with a 48-year-old. The men are running 5s and 6s. 5s and 6s. It's horrible. But that's why you, you kind of like to watch those cabinet shows and them Hallmark show things. and Don't get your wife riled up. Mark. <laughs> I enjoy being a guy. Because it's a fight to be a guy. That works fantastically and there's more on that in the future. I think we have some holdovers from Obamacare. Dr. Panikar was using that anal catheter over and over and somebody said, look man, you gotta throw that thing out in between the patients. He just didn't think, you know, there's cost cutting procedures that need to be followed. And so when you get weird diseases down the road and I'm like, well, what, what have you done? Well, your bronchoscopy that they didn't wash out and your colonoscopy that they didn't wash out, that little rectal tube, they never washed that one out. Your catheter was still warm from the last dude. <clears throat> the amount of things that you guys have had done to you, you wonder where you get these weird things. Well, that's one of the places you get the weird things. This is very, 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 very important. I would consider this classified. This is a classified article that you are not supposed to read. I'm going to say some cryptic things today that I can't really talk about, so I'm going to have to say them cryptically because we're all radio, we're all radio stations, Columbia Scientists Report. All atoms in humans or in steel are found to emit and receive long waves. You are a real antenna, just like a real radio station. Now they do not want you to know the extent of how much of a radio station you really are. Heavy metal increases your antenna. When you're full of all these heavy metals, which they're piling in you as fast as they can, they increase your antenna. Now, aluminum, arsenic, lead, lithium, manganese, mercury, and thallium are well known for their behavioral effects in humans. The medical community never figured this out, but everybody else knows that. That's, you know, Library of Medicine, National Institutes of Health. Now, lead inhibits GABA. Now, GABA is the relaxing neurotransmitter in your brain. If everybody in Flint is full of lead and the lead gets in the way of your GABA, which relaxes your brain, which neurotransmitter is left with? The excitatory ones, because you've shut off the calming ones. <clears throat> Oops. This kid, this, I don't know if this family from Wisconsin, this, I had a family from Wisconsin yesterday, wonderful family. I didn't have the mom's hair analysis, do I? Ma's is real good. All right, this family came from Wisconsin. Ma's hair analysis was perfect. <clears throat> the daughter's 21 years old. What was the story was, the daughter went one time to the OBGYN he gave her a bunch of vaccines while she was pregnant. The kid got the medals. I have hers and the kid's hair analysis right next to each other. I can tell you that the kid's was fine. That, 
the kid got everything. And I have before and afters of moms and the kids. This is extremely important. It didn't go to mom. It went straight to the kid. Kid didn't have a chance on this one. Now, you do not, I have to say, you do not have to eat meat to stay healthy. <laughs> Everybody, you say, you do not. There's plenty of plant proteins. This is for a couple of guys in my hockey league. We had a couple of vegetarians on the league. To watch them fight on their own bench with each other is kind of fun. They don't get enough protein. Mental illness, I have my craziest patients, percentage-wise, think plants have the protein and fat to run their brain. You need more fat and more protein because my vegetarians are the craziest part of my practice that don't do it right. You either do it right or skip it. It's simple to tell how you're doing it right. Ask your friends. But it takes protein to make it work. There you go. There's the lady that shot up YouTube yesterday, a passionate about fitness and veganism. There she stands, and it's our fault. Ah, so there you find so. They're crazy. But you can do this, just don't talk about beans and don't talk about protein. Actually ingest it and prove to me that your blood sugar is stable. I would say right now, not only is she probably possessed by something, but she's probably on a cracker. <laughs> you know, it's funny, at this, and it's funny all of you guys that have been patients for a while, when they have one of these big threatening rallies, for Pete's sake, we'd run right through the middle of it because there is no such thing as a threatening rally. They don't have the ability. It's all anger and no substance. Now, this is important. Every day, 6.45 Hiroshima bombs go into the atmosphere. Every single day, that's what's coming out of Fukushima. 6.45 Hiroshima bombs directly into the atmosphere in the Pacific Ocean. Now, since it happened, there's been 16,544.25, that'd be 600 now, 16,600 Hiroshima bombs, 6.45 a day, half-life about 4.7 billion years. Do you understand how close the next Olympics is going to be to this. So between now and the Olympics, 6.5 Hiroshima's a day are going to go off about, I don't know, 80, 100 miles right from Fukushima. So just everybody pay attention. I got my little Geiger counter watch. I'm ready. <laughs> it's a family story. But that's what's going to watch this next Olympics. See who wants to go in an absolute radioactive zone. Unbelievable. Now, if you are squeamish, this is not for the squeamish. I have a special part for this lecture because stuff is so poorly handled today in the year 2018. I'm going to take you on a special journey, and I appreciate my daughter-in-law sharing something. I, have, I am actually a grandfather now, and Derek, my son here, we're going to go live with this subject on Facebook. This is going to be a very powerful part that the world and the chiropractors that watch this need to understand. Something is being grotesquely mishandled, and I'm going to teach you how bad it's been mishandled. If you're squeamish, I'd look away. Roll them. Alexis is actually watching. That was her in the purple shirt. She, I make big children. She just found out how big the kids are. Now, now, there's my wife and there's my son. Look, it is how this is the first time we walked up to see him, her. Look how her head is. Her neck's been completely wrenched. 
Her eyes are crossed. Now, that hospital did a great job hauling her out. I am not saying nothing about the hospital whatsoever. You got to get the kid out. That's not, I don't think she cares how to get the kid out. You got to get the kid out. So I'm not saying nothing about that. What happens to these kids at birth, she didn't want to take pictures of the kid because Alexis sweetly said, she's not very photogenic. Her eyes are crossed. Yes. <laughs> what happens? Now, that's how the neck was when we saw it completely. You're going to see some crazy stuff today. That would be exactly the position of that atlas. Exactly the position of that atlas. Now, a thousand newborns checked in German, Germany, 80% had trauma from birth. Nobody addressed this. I do not trust my profession doing this. I've been doing this for 36 years. I trust me doing this. I adjust babies exactly like I adjust adults. It's simple. They're just little. Okay, now, when I just adjusted Tilly's little neck, you could hear it across the room. It sounds like pulling your thumb. All these little kids, when their atlas is out, it's very easy to hear. Now, that's the picture with her eyes crossed after birth, being wrestled out like that. Now, <laughs> she had adjusted. Now her eyes point straight. The faster you, nobody caught Shaquille O'Neal. Nobody caught, I can name the people that I cross-eyed on TV. Now I adjusted her neck one time. They're going to go back home. I'm going to probably catch it one more. These kids, I do two to three times. They're clumsy. This is the last kid picked. Their nose runs. They're gomers. They can't hit the rim. They can't hit a tennis ball. They can't do nothing. And they don't hurt at all. Not one lick of pain. Kelly. Kelly had twins. The famous Kelly. Which one's neck is out of place? That one or that one? Look at, the, look at that eye turned in. How many times have I adjusted your daughter? Twice. So the kids don't pick on her at school. Now, how coordinated is she? She's got eye, you should see her swing a bat at this age. That's what it's like to have your neck out at birth. There's Kim's kid. <clears throat> Kim's in the back. Kim, how many times have I adjusted? How old was Nicholas when I adjusted him? Her husband almost pooped his pants when he had to sit there and watch this. <laughs> and Kim's so good at this in the back, she just calmed Fred right down. Just sit there. He does this all the time. Shut up. <laughs> I jerked his neck in place. Now I'm not going to shoot spitballs at him in the corner. One of my favorite, I raised him since before he was even thought of. He walked in like this two weeks ago, little Michael. He's some of my favorite kids, Michael and Thomas. And there's David, it's the Three Stooges. I treat these kids and their cousin. He woke up, at it. look at his eyes. Now they'll send you to a physical therapist and we'll exercise that neck and get it to stay out of place forever so you're constantly like this. Took three adjustments to get his neck in the right direction. The Albanians handed me his kid. I have not seen this clip yet. Roll them. Let's we'll see what happens. These are some of my famous Albanian patients, of which I've enjoyed seeing for years. This guy came to me when he was about, how old were you? Like five. Five. He was this tall. His dad handed him to me and said, do something to my son. I said, what's the matter? He said he runs like a girl. Now listen to what he had been through from having his neck messed up at birth. Mom? We took him for his foot, because he had a flat foot. They told him he needs surgery, then... Surgery on a foot. How many doctors did you take him to all together? Um, four or five. Four or five doctors. Yes. What was wrong with the side of his body? He was like, his numb, like... What was it like? You, it was like... You could not, like, I don't know. Run. I just couldn't run. Like, my feet were like... I would walk weird, like... My feet would be slanted, like when I walked and when I ran. I couldn't run straight in like a straight line. <clears throat> this is what it's like to have your neck violently treated at birth and to have your brain stem irritated with your atlas. Remember what side your atlas was out on? Was it my atlas? I think right side. Right, right side. I Watch when that brain stem gets adjusted correctly, what happened to your life after your brainstem was released from a birth trauma? It's been totally different since then. I mean, from 
just like a year after you did that, I could run, I could play just as like any other kid. In fifth grade, I started playing basketball. Then I moved to soccer. Last year, I ran for my high school track team. None of that would have happened. <clears throat> Zero. There's so many they can't hit a tennis kids ball. out there from a birth trauma. He was handed to me after five doctors, everybody. He was in zero pain. That's These the kids point. get used to the misaligned. You guys are so misaligned with no pain. Do something to that, him. That's he runs by the like time it's bad, it's all messed catch, up. He can't throw and he can't run. His neck was that bad at birth, as was Kelly's sister, who had, hey, was an optometrist, had the same thing. Now, number one, I want to go to this one. This is a famous coach's kid. If I named his name, everybody knows this guy's name in Michigan. They handed me his daughter at 19, left-sided cerebral palsy. Left-sided. Now the point is, chiropractic has deteriorated to back and neck pain, which is ridiculous. Not one of these people had anything to do with pain. Now, <clears throat> go ahead. This is always seen one chiropractor. After our little special piece on atlases, adjusting this little girl's atlas after she was born, how much did it change your daughter's balance to everybody, obviously? Drastically. My wife noticed it the first day when she saw her. She just walked straight. These are wobbly. They fall off their bike. They fall off everything. And you can hear me adjust their neck. It's not a little magic thing. I can't, you'll hear it. It's a real adjustment. Now, it's done. Does anybody, now my kids are right there. There's Derek, there's Dylan. I really didn't encourage my kids to do this. No. Did I give you guys much pressure to do this, really? No. Nope. You want to know why? You know what it's like to do this for a living. You really know what it's like to do this for a living? You don't. You'll say you do, but you really don't. So little milk toast people come up to me and say, you know, I do. I want to do this for a living. Really? They're going to eat you alive and spit you out, aren't they? He knows. They spit you out all over the plant, haven't they? Because your sister got all messed up from vaccines, and if you talk about that, you're the crazy man, aren't you? Yep, this guy fights for his sister. Talk to him. He's got a story. It's online. <clears throat> I'm sitting at a church party, minding my own business. <clears throat> if you were a plumber, and you were sitting there minding your own business, and somebody walked up, oh, you're a plumber? The last guy that I saw left poop in the basement. You leave poop in the basement? What, how low class of a thing would that really be? <laughs> if you were an, an engineer, oh, you worked at Ford, you must have been the numbskull that put the Pinto, the gas tank in the back of the Pinto. Was that you? <coughs> now, how crazy would that sound to say to somebody that you didn't know in a room of people? Do you have any idea what's been said to me in a room of people? Any idea from total strangers at that house? Oh, are you one of those guys that shoots lots of x-rays by his father? Are you one of those guys that likes to schedule people a lot? I look at you like your parents should have been practicing birth control because <laughs> obviously you slipped through the cracks there, didn't you? Don't put your hand in the cage if you don't want to get bit. It was not a good church gathering. <laughs> I am not going to be insulted <clears throat> under any circumstances. This is my favorite family. They're my favorite patients now. And his dad came to one of these lectures and walked up after and said, I should have kept my mouth shut. Mm -hmm. You want to know why? Roll them. This is Daniel. He came in when he was six years old. He'd worn a patch on his eye for how many years? At least three to five years. Three years he had that pirate patch. When his parents found me, I said his brain stem's pinched. I adjusted his atlas. How long did it take for your eye to go straight? Pretty quickly within that day. 
within that day, he was six years old, he's 23 years old, this is what it looks like to have both eyes pointing straight, and this was a pirate patch after three years. Thank you for your story, Dan. So, Dad comes to my lecture. This is a couple of years or two later. He's been on the patch the whole time. So we are at another gathering. So as he starts to realize, my gosh, I've really overstepped my bounds, haven't I? I said, by a long shot. I said, you understand? If you would have kept your mouth shut, I walked over to that kid, ripped the patch off his head, and jerked his neck in place. I said, I'd have done that two years ago. That's what actually happened. That's the story. I just didn't tell you that part. You've been running around with that patch for two years because he's an idiot. <laughs> Look, it goes on. Con you have no clue what goes on, what's been said to me in my life. You do not want this job whatsoever. I was put here for a reason because I'm tough enough to handle all of you, believe it or not. I had a lot of weird training to put me here. I had unusual mentors, Dr. Versendahl, Harry Eidner. I want to do a shout out to Harry. I owe all these guys that made me who I am. It wasn't me. I copied people better than me. So this is how you're treated as an alternative practitioner because the Matrix on TV trained you to do that. You didn't think this. You were trained to do that. It's flu season. It's nonsense. This is the lady that runs Whole Foods in Troy. Diagnosed with MS in January, tingling in the right forearm and hand, woke up one day, falling to the right side, dragging the leg, hand not working, slurred speed, shocks down spine, tilting head forward. Uh, uh, Tilly would have had that. M MRI, spinal tap, MS, IV st steroids, oral steroids. They put her on rebuff, but they had to stop it because she got hepatitis from the medication. She was a vegan, now she's on paleo. She's going to get it one way or the other. After all Amanda had been through, after adjusting her atlas off her brain stem once, how long did it take for your MS symptoms to start to dramatically improve? Um, I would say within 24 hours. How long till they're completely gone? I would say about a week. Thank you. Done. Not one of these people came in because they were in pain. We've deteriorated to the pain guys because most of us stink at this. Everybody knows the famous Rachel. This story went around the world 10 times. Go ahead. Last time Rachel was in here, it was twice as bad as this. This is her second visit. And then we adjusted her atlas and it stopped. How many months ago was that, Mom? Three, four months ago. She held it for three atlas months. Atlas can slide on the brainstem. It's the brain stem gets pinched right underneath the skull. I adjusted uh, my granddaughter the same good. time. There's three moves to this, that's two. If you notice, it's already started to settle down. It took three moves to get this brain stem unpinched. This is the third one. I'll be easy here. Everybody in the world I can comment globally from the chiropractors and doctors. Oh, is relax. Mom, come on over here. You're in. Uh, how many psychiatrists or psychologists? So she's a psychiatrist now for this. Two psychiatrists. Two psychiatrists. And three neurologists told us that. Three neurologists. Was, and I'm a counselor. I'm a counselor. Counselor. Told her that it was in her head. She couldn't handle stress. She's been in the emergency room. Two emergency rooms. Three. Three. Three emergency rooms. We can't three keep track of the emergency room. Room. She was so Valium bad. IV, and she was basically told she was nuts. <clears throat> After the one atlas adjustment, this stops dead, and her life goes on like it was before. The doctors don't want to address that this was a mechanical problem, not an internal problem. Uh, you know, uh, you know what she said to me. I'm walking and looking at this gal the first time. She was twice that bad. And she said to me, I was in a marching band in Texas, and I fell over eight months ago and hit my head. Your head's off. Eight months later, she starts that. Conrad, 
watches this 15 hours away. I know what happened to me when I was born. Quits his job. He's graduating chiropractic school because I adjusted his atlas once. From, drove 15 hours to get his neck wrenched in place that didn't hurt because it was dislocated. It's just sad how missed this whole thing has been. Hi, my name is Conrad and this is my story for Dr. Tent. I was born with a birth trauma to my upper cervical neck. Um, as a baby, my head would fall to the side and my mom would you know, put me back into place and try to make me straight again. Um, doctors told her it's fine not to worry about it. Well, I was okay most of my life until I reached about 21 years old. At 21 years old, I started having neurological problems like um, numbness and weakness in the left side of my body, from my face to my hand to my foot, all the way down, all of it. And I saw neurologists and I saw other medical doctors. They ran their tests on me and they said, you seem okay, we don't know what's wrong, and we can offer you painkillers and antidepressants to help you. And I thought, that's not good enough. I want to be cured. So I sought alternative care. I went to chiropractors and chiropractors did help me temporarily which gave me hope that this is a fixable problem. I'm not gonna be screwed up my whole life. So they did help me, but it wasn't permanent. My symptoms would come back a day later, a week later. Um, I was on YouTube one day and I saw one of Dr. Penn's conferences. And in that conference, he has a girl with the exact same symptoms as I had. So I figured if he fixed her, I hope he can do it again. So I made an appointment, I saw him and he is that good. He did it again and he fixed me and my pain has been gone since that adjustment, since that first adjustment, it's been gone. I've been so inspired by Dr. Tan that I've left my engineering career and I'm now at Palmer College of Chiropractic because I want to do what he does. He's the best. So, thank you very much. A note on my desk this week. I forgot all about this. Colin was losing strength on his right side, just a thank you came in, and a headstone fell on his head. After he adjusted, you told him one day you'd run and you'd actually hit the backboard with a basketball because the kid was just these tall, skinny kids with their necks out, put his neck in place, he ran cross country. Mess. Simple stuff. Now, that's your a little stone called the pineal gland in your head that's not supposed to look like that. I believe losing that pineal gland, all those cool things that goes on in that little organ, defluoridate your body, raise up your melatonin, get your pineal gland working because I think there's a lot of perception with that little gland. And I'm gonna tell you, the world's changing. I would tell you, the scam of fluoride is going to end, and it's going to be ending soon. There's already been it's the stuff that's going to change in our country. There's things I, lo I want to tell you, but I can't tell you yet because they're coming up in the future, and these things will get scrubbed if I talk about them. There's lots of things that I'd love to talk about. I can't believe the direction of what's actually taking place. 300 maybe CEOs of pharmaceutical companies have resigned. Hundreds. Now, the reason why is what I'd love to talk about, but I'm afraid to talk about the reason why they resigned. Well, I'm way too scared to talk about. Now, this is what my wife has. The moment I got in that car, I complained, something's wrong with this car. This car's going to kill me. I wouldn't drive in this car without the windows open because it was horrible. And I'm here to tell you as a guy, I smelled this a long time ahead of my wife. Way, it's a horrible car. Horrible. It has a, it has a leak in the manifold. It's a, death, it's a death car. Now, to smell that ahead of your wife times 10, zinc. Appetite, taste, and smell. I have to keep my zinc up for a hundred reasons, but to s that analyzing, how could you not smell this car because it had a very funky smell? And that's a big problem for Ford. We got the lucky one. Now, on PubMed, the introduction of DPT, you know, hopefully they're not here today. I got to look through this crowd. I had... American patients that have been five-year patients 
said to me today, as I'm, one of my last patients said to me today, my daughter here is doing a paper on vaccinations and she, what do you think about vaccinations and did you vaccinate your kids? I looked at her. She's been to my lectures. She watches all the things that go on in the waiting room. I said, this is mean, I apologize. I said, only an American would ask me that. I said, where's my Albanians? Raise your hands. I got this entire contingent of foreigners, my practice thing. I said, you know how glad I am to have this gigantic ethnic practice? Because they don't ask me these kind of questions, <laughs> ever. They wouldn't even think about it. We're not going to talk about cholesterol and fluoride and flu shots. They've grown so far past you guys. I don't know what to sit in my room for years and ask if I vaccinated my children. I just think that the fluoride farm has gotten thick. <laughs> yes, I don't. This is every day. You do the, you know, you have your battles. You should see what people say to me. I just didn't even scratch the surface of the insulting things as an alternative practitioner. Didn't scratch the surface. But the DPT shot works because when they analyzed everything, it, DTP was associated with increased mortality. You died. So who cares what you get? You're not going to get anything because you'll be dead. Now, we are losing ground on the vaccine race. I went to Palmer College of Chiropractic in Davenport, Iowa. Where is that? Right there. That's the one I went to. That's where it all started. I figured if you're going to be a quack, at least go to the top school. <laughs> now, these colleges are no vaccines. So all you kids, those are the only colleges you are allowed to go to. I want to shame another list. Disgusting. Chiropractic schools are requiring vaccinations. You're not allowed to go to Canadian Memorial College. You're, you're embarrassing. Logan College is embarrassing. National, let's go New York. You don't want to do anything in New York. You don't want to go there, skip New York. The whole place is rules, laws. They're going to control your life and charge you. You don't want to try to get your kids out of the school. They're going to get poisoned to live in New York. Parker University, embarrassing. Texas College. So everybody, make sure this list goes all over because you do not want to go to these schools and we should probably shut them down and they missed the whole point. And I have no problem with the people that like to get shots. You can have mine and my children's and my granddaughters. You know, Kelly wanted, I forgot this story at the last lecture, the crazy lecture. All right, we've been out of school long enough. A guy from West Virginia. They told us people are going to get divorced, people are going to commit suicide, all kinds of things are going to go on in a professional school. So in the middle of class, this is last lecture story. In the middle of class one day, there's about 150, 175 kids in class, much bigger than this. This kid stands up from Norway and walks up to the front of the class. And Mr. Mikau, I'll remember, is... He would lecture. Now, they were writing on overheads. And it was over, you know, is that how it was for you guys? They're writing on overheads. We're, I'm just kind of, now, if you were smart, you went to the frat house and bought the notes and you highlighted. I was, then if, the, and if he was going by the notes, you weren't there for a couple days because I know he'll be here by this day. So this guy, and this guy walks up and he's standing there, cups up, and he stands and he's looking at Mr. Mikau. And, the, and Mr. Mikau stops and looks at him and goes, yes. And he goes, I want to talk. And Mikau looks at him like, and somebody yells out, let him talk. <laughs> Guy walks up. I want to tell you all that I love you. I love all of you, and I just wanted to, you know, know that I love you. And a guy in the back, Brad Buxton, yelled out in his dead silence, whatever he took, give me half. <laughs> a compassionate doctor, I'm sure, probably went on to do euthanasia. <laughs> that broke the ice. <clears throat> we never saw him again. He wandered away. <clears throat> Be all, the rest of us held together. Whatever he took, give me half. Now, can I ask you a question? 
You know, I graduated in 1975. Losing some things, we lost a real cool dude that I remember. I didn't understand all this story, but he was the one that made the whole thing work. How did we really lose Curly? We ended up with drunk Shemp. We ended up with strange Curly Joe. He was odd. We had to run a background check on a couple of those guys. What happened to Curly? You want to know what happened to Curly? All right. Sadly, in 1945, something happened to Curly. That year, Curly had a stroke and never worked again. The act continued with substitutes, but they weren't really Curly. Hmm. Larry wrote a book. In the early part of 45, we were asked to go overseas to appear at various military installations. We readily accepted this request and prepared to leave and went through the series of overseas shots required. We had all taken our shots and were prepared to leave when Curly, apparently from side effects of the overseas shots, is stricken with a stroke. We lost Curly from a vaccine to go overseas for, to entertain the people that were vaccinated over there. This was a great shock to us because Curly, oops, Curly was a part. Unbelievable. I did not know we ended up with drunk Shemp because of vaccinated Curly. How many people knew that story? Yeah. Nobody. One. Good. How many people know who Mike Rogers is? Four. Four. <laughs> you have no clue where that guy is going to come out and everything that's going to come out in this next year all started because there was one patriot in the pile. It was him. You have no clue the game that's going to start because of him. No clue. Buckle up, everybody. This is why my deductible is 6,000, Dylan's is 12,000, because of this. Want to know why your bills are expensive, how embarrassing your, your health costs are? Now we're going to get into what a gigantic mess looks like. One of my favorite teachers, you can do anything with teacher. They're wonderful patients, they're compliant, you can take parts out of them as long as insurance covers it, like my dad. You know, big three, for Jim Chrysler, schools, government, union, I love Maxine. Roll it. Here's one of my old time patients, Maxine. Had Hadn't seen her in years. Maxine, let me see you lift up your shoulder. She's had three months of physical therapy, and that's what she's done with. She's, been, she's in here for a renew. I want to show you something. Three months of physical therapy. I'm going to shut this off for 30 seconds and turn it back on. Hold still. Here's Maxine. Maxine, raise up your arm. All the way up. Oh. Now, what was your copay? Well, at the end, 350 but $12 a, a day for three days a week in a Blue Cross and, and Medicare. Three, three times a week for three months to have absolutely nothing done. This is what we're paying for. And that was a 30 second correction. Yep. Does it work? I can't believe it. Now, I would shut this off, and then she says, now, this is 36 treatments. They exercise it out of place. You know what it's like to have something out of place? This happens every day. She got 36 treatments to exercise her shoulder out of place. It'll stay there forever. So we shut this off, and then she says this. The story continues on. Tell me what you just said, Maxine. Well, I have, I'm scheduled to go to another different PT on Monday because that one didn't work for three months, so I went to another place, and I'm supposed to go there Monday and get a... Start working on this. Raise your arm up again. <laughs> <laughs> I've done. Oh, this has been 36 I years of this, folks. I've done 5,000 of these. Stuff anymore. This is the frozen shoulder that they mess up so bad. Now, when you bring them in like this, you're done. You blew it for 15 years. 
I've done 5,000 of these, 36 physical therapy treatments, exercising it out of place. Everybody throws themselves out and you go to some guy and you think you got lucky because you only had to pay 12 bucks to exercise your shoulder out of place and he got paid the rest. War stories, she had a war on her shoulder, didn't she? That's thousands are blown on things that never get better. This is my whole day and I'm the guy that listens to this stuff at parties and at places when I'm minding my own business from people. <laughs> Which is why you don't see me go out places and do things because I'm not going to sit and defend boobery and nonsense constantly because that's about where we're down to. Joseph knows. Please ask Joe. He's lived that life. How bad is, how exciting is Dr. Versendahl's, just that he taught me really? Watch this. This is the stuff Dr. Versendahl. Hi, blank. I'm 22. Starts taking Cytosine PTHPT, grows 1.5 centimeters because he wasn't done growing. Dr. Versendahl would stick people on raw pituitary, and I watched him. And Carol, you've seen him do that at some of the seminars. He'd take some little midget and go, I can make you grow about three inches. And the guy would come back in the year, and he, the midget would be about three inches taller. And the guy was 42 when he did it. This is the stuff that's out there that you guys never saw because it's all Claritin, and it's flu shots, and it's time to take your chemo. Now, these are wonderful patients. This little short kid came in about this big some years ago. He was kind of short and stumpy. I did not think he's going to go into this stud. His lovely mother said, what can David do on the trampoline to pitch? Really? Bounce on your trampoline, start with two pound weights, and work up to five pound weights. You just keep throwing on that trampoline. Two, one year, two years, three years. Goes to Syracuse, I think, in New York. Huh? In New York? I thought he was in New York, wherever it is. So he goes into college because he followed his instructions with you patients. Generally, still we're working on the fluoride for a lot of the folks throwing 97 miles an hour, starting college, and he ain't done growing. So the coach is like, how, how possibly could you throw this hard? And he said, I've been bouncing on a trampoline, throwing a weight. The entire team is bouncing on trampolines, throwing weights. <laughs> now, I think this lady's in the crowd. This lady got sick of hearing war story. She has an accent. It's very important to understand. She has an accent. It's part of the story. She has an accent. I called it a Russian accent, and she yelled at me because she's actually Belgian. You all sound the same over there to me. Mission Impossible, you're always running around from the Mission Impossible people. <laughs> so she's sick of hearing she's got arthritis. Everybody's sick about the arthritis thing. Here's her x-ray. Look at the bottom disc. There's a disc, there's a disc. So they tell this woman, you don't have any arthritis really, but she has a terrible back. She's 51 years old and all those beautiful discs except that one. Everybody said, you have arthritis. Really? I looked at it, I said, all right, what happened? What do you remember is the worst thing that ever happened to you? And she said when she was six years old, her uncles were playing catch with her and one dropped her, and she ruptured her bottom disc at the age of six and lived her whole life. There's Hilda, and she had a real answer for her back. I have to keep that from sticking, and we pull it apart and use minerals. And whatever relief she can get, she's lucky. I'd stem cell that back. You want to keep your legs going, because the more stuck that gets, the worse your legs are going to get. But that's a dropped child at six. Isn't that amazing? But doctor, that's arthritis, not arthritis. That is a ruptured disc that calcified. It's arthritic, but it's not arthritis. It's very important to understand that. <clears throat> All right. Now, Uncle Dick. <laughs> you had one too. <laughs> my, I have Aunt Muriel and Uncle Dick. There was my mother you saw sitting here. There's her sister's husband. Black and blue from here to here, from all the plavix, all the cuminin. Beat up, how, look at him, 
how he has withstood the chemical assault is by the grace of God only. I can't believe he's taken what he's taken. He's 92, this eye's gone, this eye's half gone, he's getting shots constantly in his eyes, now he asks me for help. <laughs> he's an independent village in Brighton. Roll him. Well, I've been getting injections in my eye I have immaculate degeneration, both a wet and a dry. And uh, I started on this here uh, complete eye, what I, I believe it was about four months ago. And uh, since then, the doctor's been so pleased with the progress that uh, he's cut it down out of every 12 weeks. And he's going to evaluate the next time uh, I go in to see if we're going to continue getting the shots. And he asked you, he asked you what you were taking and you said? I told him that I was taking this uh, complete eye that uh, you would give me any, and uh, I, I told him it was a ground up goat eye. <laughs> the chart where you read the A, B and whatever, I was able to read the real small print. Could you do that before? No, I couldn't get down more than uh, either, the, I think it was a third row. Now, next. Do you understand? One eye's gone. This eye was, I was there Saturday to visit him. I asked him, how much better is the eye that's left? Saturday, he told me 70%. He's getting shots every four weeks from all the blood thinners that he was on. Within the first four weeks, I went to visit him. He said, Randy, he said the doctor was blown away. He said, my eyes are healing. One, four weeks. So those two things, four months, Saturday, he said, my eyes, I got my vision back. He's growing the center of his eye back. That's all he's doing. Four and two, simple stuff. And he had to tell him what he was doing because this guy's having a blast putting injections in his eyes every four weeks and has no clue how I'm healing his eye or does he even care? All day and I am going to be said something at a party Someone's going to say, do you sell that stuff that they peddle online? <laughs> you have no clue what has been said to me. Not a clue. And the kids know because they've been through this. Sh they've been shunned by people because they're chiropractors' kids. Stay away from them. <laughs> so, true or false? Absolutely true. Paul, Paul, you're a wonderful once. Paul comes in with his lovely friend, I'm going to call it. And Paul, this is you. This is Paul. You know. Paul. Paul's elbow does this. So Paul runs to urgent care, straight to urgent care. Not as a 45, 80 year patient, straight to urgent care. Straight to urgent care. So, guy says, oh my gosh, you have cellulitis. Slits open his elbow and proceeds to milk nothing out of the elbow. There's nothing in his elbow. So after they get done milking his elbow, well, it, since it's obviously cellulitis, they put him on an antibiotic for 10 days. Now I get him after the cellulitis, it's been slit open as an established patient on an antibiotic for 10 days. I said, how much meat do you eat? He said, a ton. I said, you have gout. Now, I've seen a, 50 of you women told you have rheumatoid arthritis. The richer the neighborhood, the more rheumatoid you actually are. <laughs> gout. Gout is missed all the time, I watched a heart surgeon drill a gout stone out of a person's heart and have no clue why it was a stone inside the coronary artery because they were drilling on a gout pebble inside Tom's heart. I steered them into a little more intelligent approach to that. Then, now, Bridget, these are fun. You know, if you can feed these, you know, what holds, what makes this job fun 
It's not the drooling slot people that have no hope, which they're wonderful. I know they have no hope. To have results. I get the sickest of the sickest, but there's, it's fun to have people who haven't, and as everybody's waited till they're complete, my stage four categories are full. I'm up to my elbows. Start taking care of your health ahead of time, because when something happens, she's a prison guard. Boy, did one fight in prison change her life. Now, I saw her that day at probably one. I was her 17th doctor. Everyone knows 15 doctors, operations, chiropractic adjustments, physical therapy medications, and recommendations. She was in a fight, and they threw her, she threw her uh, inmate, threw her against a bunk bed, and she hit here, right here, against something wedged against the wall. She, here. Chiropractic care twice a week, normally physical therapy, the exercise is out of place. The physical therapist said your coccyx is broken. The spinal surgeon says we're going to take your tailbone out. We'll get that tailbone out of the way. Everything will be straightened out in no time. Now, trying to control her, she has a story. I popped her sacrum in place. She has a really long story that I really tore me out because it's too long. She stood up as her 17th doctor. Now, you doc, now the people watching this, right my, a sacrum, you got that triangle shaped sacrum. All I did, I put her on her side, crammed that thing straight down hit it. She was giddy. So my name is Sarah. Um, I got injured at work at the jail that I was working at um, last June and I knew I had a tailbone injury but um, none of the doctors could really um, pinpoint exactly what it was and none of them could heal me. Um, I went to several chiropractors physical therapist, spine doctors, and I had several things done. Um, spinal injections, I was on medication. Um, I, my, la my last option was to get my tailbone removed and that's <laughs> almost to the point where what I was gonna get. And a couple weeks ago, my Aunt Bridget told me about Dr. Tent and I came here last week and with one appointment, I, um, I was 100% healed. I left here and I had no pain. Um, she did one adjustment on my tailbone. And I literally was the first time in nine months that I didn't feel any pain. It was really, really awesome that I met uh, Dr. Tent and she I She was a pleasant him. soul. I walked in. And this is, I walk in. Hi, how are you? Just like this. She couldn't even straighten out. And I just looked at her. Now. I want to show you the doctors what the secret is to this. I want to show that it's a real simple secret to the, the sacral apex, and she did exact. And I had to repeat this. And this is how you. This is something for. Like, this is easy to see. People with a sacral apex, where that whole sacrum's kicked back, all the nerves going down your legs. This is how they get up. They push themselves up. They can't get out of the seat. For you hockey guys, I treated the highest paid guy on the Tampa Bay Lightning for that misalignment. When I went down to Tampa, the franchise player walked in, who you'd know his name. That's what's the matter with you. He said, my legs are weak. A sacral, a sacral apex move from Versendahl is a tricky little push the sacrum back down. The fun ones over my life, one lady stood up, all the tingling was gone on her legs, and she looked at me and said, I got 40 grand into this. Tingling, because all I got to use is the MS word, and I'm going to get everything out of you because it's, I'm, you're never going to be paralyzed, you'll never walk again. So she pushed herself up, because when your sacrum's out, you have no strength in your legs. That's a very simple, very simple adjustment. She was fixed instantly, and it's fun to do those because... You know, it's, you get a simple misalignment, nobody can fix anything, your whole life hinges on that one simple misalignment. I got one of my favorite patients, 
Chris Capala was in today. Just on time attendance, Haggerty and Nine Mile. His wife was probably one of my favorite patients. He has just on time attendance and anybody with a company should call, that's a payroll company and they have a very first class service. Celeste doing everything right with me, absolutely everything, took all the stuff, did everything I wanted, had funny back bone pain. By the time she got a hold of this, she had stage four bone cancer in about nine months. There's a 3% cancer and she got it. I don't care if you juice, I don't care what you do, you can hang upside down, you can move to Alaska. There's a prostate cancer that's going to smoke you. It's three out of 100. Guy in hockey, one of the guys in hockey, he walked into the locker room, Tom McIntyre's dead. When he fell, his, his arm was broke. It was already in his bones. So I'm here to tell you, if you walk into one of these, which she did, <clears throat> There's not anything that you're going to do except see how long you can live and drag this out because it's, there's some fast cancers that you just better understand. I can't say that bend over thing, but it's about bend over and just go for long term. Now, she was a smart person and she'd love to know I was telling this story right now because she had six eye surgeries. And I said to Chris this morning, I said, I'd love to talk about your wife tonight. She had six eye surgeries to try to straighten out a crooked eye, and she comes to me, for Pete's sakes, my neck's out. After six, and today, this morning, her husband that runs that company that all you big businesses should use because it's a great company, he said, I went there the last time, they hooked a wire up to her eyeball, and she had to pull the wire every once in a while to try to pull the eye straight. That was this morning. Oh. <laughs> This is what it's like to be living and having good insurance and having a rich husband. You can put a wire to your eyeball and pull your eye straight when it's crooked. In my hockey league, the director of the league is her father. She runs a company in Northville that she just sold. I'll, baby, the moon and me. I live in, she just sold the business, so she's off. I get well taken care of in this league because her father, she was six. She looked like a concentration camp victim. She'd been to all the doctors. She was weight loss and she looked really, really bad. She was so saturated with parasites that six years later, when she went to get her eyes checked, a smart ophthalmologist looked in her eyes and said, have you ever had parasites? And she said, I had a horrible case of parasites. Why? He said, I can see the damage in your eye. And that was cool. But getting her back on her feet is a game changer. Game changer. People look like they're concentration camp survivors when you're that bad with parasites. And this kid was rough. I made her turn around. The story was horrible. Now, one of my famous favorite patients, I've seen her for years, I know we've been through so much. There's a lot of things I can't talk about because everything's on YouTube all over the world right now and people aren't really happy. A lot of people are getting better. So most of the things you can't talk about, but I can say this one thing with her because it's been a long journey. They got her on, a, it's July. This is Carol. Her family goes up north camping. They all get together in July. She goes up north. She's sleeping in a tent. It's July. She walks out of the tent in the morning completely swollen. Her entire body was swollen. They said, oh my God. They rushed her to the hospital up wherever campground it was up north, probably around Houghton Lake or something. And that emergency room, Carol's got congestive heart failure. Carol comes down, calm. She didn't get riled up. She goes to the cardiologist, runs every possible test you could possibly run. Then she comes to me. Now, this is for the doctor's story. This is where the doctor part comes in. Versendahl has a salt reflex. A salt reflex. I'm going to do a little bit of salt stuff. War stories. These are war stories. So she comes in, the salt reflex, the cerebrospinal fluid reflex, the salt reflex. She's on a water pill on a low salt diet camping in July. 
I said, Carol, you lost your salt. I put her on 19 Cal ammo and the Celtic salt. She peed out 10 pounds of water in three days from trying to take a water pill in the middle of July with no salt. She goes to the cardiologist after the tests are run. He said, who told you you had congestive heart failure? Everybody. No, you lost your salt on a low salt diet in July, sweating in a tent. Three days. Salt. <clears throat> salt stories. One of my famous salt stories was the goalie from Toronto. IVs, constant urination, constant thirst, constant cramping. Why did that goalie sub in? Why did that accountant goalie sub? Because there was a cramp in somebody's foot. These guys cramp constantly. So the Toronto goalie, constant thirst, constant urination, constant sweating, getting an IV in between periods, rocking back and forth in the stall. Now, I fixed one of these guys. I get called down to the palace. This guy walks in front of me because I impress some people with some of these stories that I get insulted for when I'm out in my private life. <laughs> so this guy comes up to me in front of the doctors. His pads were on from here down. There was nothing from here up. Sweating. I looked at him. I said, they said, can you, because they brought this guy up. Can you bring Jeff up here? So Jeff comes up here. I said, you lost all your salt. He's been like this for 12 years. His entire career was like this. He was 32. His entire career was ruined from cramps and dehydration. That's why that account, I mean, the, the, I said, well, you lost all your salt. I want to put you on eight cal ammo. I want you to use this salt. I'll fix you. I think you'll be out of this in three days. Now, when I said that to him, the doctor that had seen him for 200 years was sitting right next to him, and this guy started laughing. I looked at him. I said, two days. <laughs> <laughs> this was back in the 90s. I was younger. I was... I was maybe more of a loud mouth, I don't know. I just said, two days. I fixed him actually in one day. The cramps, everything stopped. He lost his salt. I have salt stories that go on all day. People don't understand salt. Dennis was sitting in front of me. He was drowning in front of me. I watched a guy that had to lay down, dizzy, sick. 144 ounces of water a day, two buckets. And he had his bucket with him, big plastic bucket. He wanted to make sure it was a plastic bucket because it's, it's junk shrinkage from all that plastic. So not only was he drinking too much water with no salt, he was drowning in front of me because he overhydrated himself. Dylan watched a guy die right next to him on ESPN because he died, lost the salt. Dylan sat right there in his truck, Josh Lichtel. Now, when, we, when I did the story about Josh Lichtel, Dylan had coconut water and Celtic salt that they drank to race in motorcycle suits in July. The guy that didn't listen, because we're crazy, because your dad's a nut, dropped dead in the middle of the race. It's not now. For you, you ready? It's Juan's nephew. So when Juan says, so the stem cell guy is the nephew of that guy that dropped dead on in a motorcycle race. It's a small world. But the, the salt stories go on and on. And I'm going to tell you something. One of the people that wins the race in, uh, for his age group in uh, Detroit came in because he runs marathons and they had him running marathons on no salt, a low salt diet. And that's why I, I put him on yeah, the marathon, the guy that's like in the first place. I said, I'm the, a marathon runner. He gets paid to run. He's doing it without salt. <laughs> well, they said, we're back to they. I'm always at the they. All right. All right. Favorite patients? Old patients. <clears throat> These two ladies have been here forever. After going in the hospital, what did your heart drop to? 25%. They said if you hit what percent, you'd be lucky? 30. Now, taking some simple supplements, what's your heart working at right now? 68. 68%. The doctor said it's never going to get above 30% mm -hmm. function. This is official from a cardiologist. This is the kind of stuff you can do with nutrition that pharmaceuticals will never do. Thanks for the story.
We've kept her alive for 20 years, but you know, nobody has any interest how you've ever done that. They actually kind of get mad if you start to improve. All right. Doctors, this is one for you. This is a doctor story. All right. 20 years into these patients, there's this fellow we'll call Bill. Fran and Bill. So here's Bill pacing the floor constantly. His blood pressure is always high. He's always stressed out. He's retired. <clears throat> Back and forth. Nervous in the service. Reminds me of my uncle. <clears throat> So he's always worried about his blood pressure, but when you're like that, your blood pressure is always high, so you already lost the war. So 20 years into this, I, said, I walked in the room, I said to Fran, where's Hank? And she said, well, he got tired of walking around the parking lot. I said, what is the matter with him? For Pete's sakes, for, you know, he's retired. Look at him over there, he's relaxed. He needs to be relaxed like you. <clears throat> yes, he's an old patient, Chuck. That's what retired people usually look like. He's looked like he's going to a meeting. You'll like the story. So he's pacing, the, he's pacing. So I said to his wife, what's the matter with him? She said, well, you know, I don't know. But when he was nine, the neighbor really liked his mother and came over one day and said, you know, if I can't have you, nobody can, and murdered his mother in front of him when he was nine. Hmm? He was 75. He looked exactly like he just came from the funeral. He's stuck, just like that. And I have a million stuck men. They're cops. They had a, I walked into one guy that looked as normal. One of my most normal patients, I'll never forget this guy, he worked at General Dynamics, a normal looking dude. He had everything circled in his file. He'd been to every doctor and he looked completely normal. And I said, your dad was an absolute turd, wasn't he? And he said, how do you know? I said, because you've been to 100 doctors and there's nothing wrong with you. You had to, and then he, it all came out about what kind of a mess, because these guys are stuck. So their pressure's up. You have to pull the trigger on their sympathetic system. You got to pull their cortisol down because they're trapped. And the doctors capitalize on that trappage. For example, <clears> to <throat> so we'll have an executive look at me and say, I take an awful lot of blood pressure medication and my numbers never change. I just tell people, just keep repeating that because it really sounds crazy after a while. <laughs> Amanda was in yesterday. My little Amanda, I said, Amanda, I'm gonna use your story. Seven, Amanda's staying with grandma. They go down the road, pick up some strawberries. Amanda eats a strawberry, throws up. Eats not a strawberry, throws up. Eats not a strawberry, throws up. Three days of throwing up. Mom calls because they're on vacation. I'm bringing, Grandma's bringing Amanda in. Amanda's throwing up when she's not sick. Amanda was perfectly well. The strawberries were completely poisoned. She threw up every strawberry that she ate. Every strawberry that she ate. Just because that stuff looks real good. Steve Jobs ate fruit till his pancreas quit. Linda McCartney said you can't eat nothing with a face and she croaked at 52. You pound that fruit, there's pancreases and aren't gonna take pounding fruit all day. They're gonna start throwing up on that. And they do it till they're sick. Now, this is what the other side of the story is. Hi, my name is Leslie. Uh, my husband and I wound up getting uh, flu type A, which is the H1N1. We take my husband to the hospital when we got there. Um, we were in the back of the physicians. Uh, the doctor asked us if either one of us had gotten a flu shot and we said, no, we don't get them. And he said, well, that's good. He said, um, because the vast majority of patients, that are, people that are in the, the ER today are had the flu shot, and they all have the flu. Thank you. Why wreck, why wreck the system? Just go with the flow and shut up. Go with the flow and shut up. It's, I don't even know what to say anymore. This is... I call this the germ multiplier. I appreciate all those little chemical things that you women got to carry on your purse to make sure that you can kill the simple germs so the ones you get are going to be like nasty. No one has any clue what they are. You'll itch forever. You're going to bring in your hands. You're going to tell me all the doctors you went to because you washed yourselves to death. Now, I can handle a clean woman. 
Now, when you men do this, I'm going to give you a testosterone shot and send you out the door. Because if you've got to wash your hands to death, because mom's going to spank you, Mike, I know. I see you back there. Get your hands where I can see them. Now, the patients might come in. How come you can't get rid of that cough? Well, if you had an inch of mold in your water glass that you filled up every day, maybe that's why. That's black mold. I don't know why you're still sick. Maybe your supplements aren't working. That's black mold. I can't, I can't, I can't watch what you're doing, a lot of the things that you're doing. A sharp 76-year-old lady comes in, a sharp 76-year-old. She's a retired nurse. And she said, I have autoimmune hepatitis. I said, I don't believe in that. She said, no, I have autoimmune hepatitis. Well, I said, I'm sure you do, but I have a lot of problems thinking that my body is going to attack itself just because it's Thursday, let's take the liver out. That's what they peddle. I'm going to take out the liver on Thursday because there's nothing else to do. Let's just kill myself from the inside out. People love these names, and they get to, then you get to go out to dinner with them, and they get to tell you about it. They get to talk about it, and they get attention, and they circle the wagons, and <clears throat> be on Facebook. I mean, for Pete's sakes, they put down the cupcake that they had. This is big news. I mean, this will, you can get everybody fired up. True? All right, so 28 years ago, she has a horrible reaction to a hepatitis B vaccine. All right, it took 28 years for that virus to eat your life. So she took her pills, she's had fantastic results. So that was a, that's how long it took that hepatitis B vaccine to get her, 28 years. And she's doing well. Adjust your pH, you alkaline people, and you can start dissolving things to make them easier to it. That's four years apart. Barb, one of my patients, understands all you, every doctor, every health food store, every book, you've alkalized yourselves to death. Well, congratulations. One guy read a book, wrote a book on it. Everybody followed it. Now you're all calcified, stuck with stones everywhere. You can't move when you're frozen. You drank your well water, your Evian, your Perrier, and right now you're stuck. And it's so sad, and I draw attention because I'm acidic, alkaline, changing the pH of this young lady. She's actually starting to dissolve things that were depositing, but nobody understands that because every book that you see from here on out is going to tell you to get more alkaline. So we'll just ignore that. Simple things that kept me limber. I play a lot of hockey. Staying limber and strong is important. I've probably had more people go to the hospital thinking they had a heart attack, treating a stump, that little stump fun, gallbladder stump fun. Now, for the doctors, this is one of my clean-cut, normal-looking patients. He's been with me 25, 30 years. I've raised his wife, his kids, everybody. He comes in, this is recent, and I, I, these are all recent stories. Everything's, my day changes constantly. This guy walks into me. These are his numbers. I have a lifelong patient. He had a clot in his leg, like from here to here. As a long-term patient, he's, done the, he's taken his pills, he's done all the right things, and I'm just looking at him. And if you like, Andrew, if you came in with the clot in your leg that long, and I'm just looking at this guy, and he said, I'm not going to lie to you, Dr. Tent. I'm not going to lie to you. So, all right. And he said, with those numbers, and he's a trim fit dude, like me, he would not look just a bigger version of me, and I'm looking at this guy, and he said, I'm not gonna lie to you, Dr. Tent, he said, when I turned 16, I went straight to McDonald's. I've drank 100 ounces of pop, and went and had french fries every day since that day. Now, 100 ounces of pop a day. He got his blood, sugar causes heart disease, not fat, Joyce. That's the, and I, I, I look, I try to look at the, I try to comprehend, I want you to think about this. He said, every single day since I turned 16. He made sure I understood this story. Every day. Think about 100 ounces of pop a day. And that's what his blood did till it turned into toothpaste because sugar clogs up the body. It was never fat. It was always sugar. 
So that was, I couldn't believe it. 100 ounces, I can't, I don't think you do 100 ounces of water. Crazy stuff. But that's what you're walking into. Now, Denise in the front, you guys know Denise in the front. Her husband plays three times a week. And he's not, to be a hockey player, you gotta play three times a week. It's not a once a week thing, I play all the time. To stay in shape. So her husband, last Monday, Denise, how's Bob, how's Bob, how's the team doing? She said, well, not that good. I said, why? She said, the guy dropped dead in the bench next to him last night. I said, is he taking his heart pills? She said, he's gonna be better about it now. <laughs> how's Bob's team doing? The guy croaked right next to him. That's happened a, a lot. If you're gonna push yourself, you better take care of yourself. I'm very proactive on my heart. The doctors that have went down with heart attacks is embarrassing. We lost another one in Midland recently, which is horrible because I know the guy. I've talked about these clotting factors and everybody seems to ignore that. When my favorite patient's wife went down and the hospital said, you've had a massive stroke last night. And I checked, I had her the next day after the massive stroke at the local hospital and looked at her and said, did you eat dinner? No, she actually had a seizure. So when I treated her for a seizure and the hospital misread it as a stroke, it happened to be a very important person who got us out of all of our traffic tickets while the kids were teenagers. <laughs> Dylan was in court with a couple of kids. Dylan, Jake, and Joe, are they here? They picked up the phone and in court and the judge went case dismissed. And the prosecutor just looked at them and Dylan called me and said, you're well connected, Dad. I said, yes. It wasn't a stroke, it was a seizure because she didn't eat. It helped, it kept insurance costs more manageable. <laughs> when that 18 year old girl stopped drinking out of plastic her periods went back to normal because she just loved that little plastic bottle with that funny little taste. Had her hormones all messed up, all kinds of funk going on just because she was sucking down the plastic. They love plastic. They're going to come in everywhere you go. They just, if they don't have enough in their body, they'll make sure they're carrying it and then they'll put it in the sun just to make sure you can bake it right in through the sun thing. You don't want to miss any plastic. Put them in your mouth, sleep in it, roll around in it. Make sure you don't miss it. Now, doctors, pay attention. This is a special one. This is a nervous patient. This is what you can do with a nervous patient. I got all these sisters. My wife, I, you know, my, my wife is a family of sisters. So I have two sisters and I have the nervous one. This is the nervous one. She has ductal carcinoma in situ, stage zero. There's all kinds of stage zero cancers out there. The rest of the world thinks we're nuts, but not here. I think Fatah developed the stage zero cancer. So, it's in the milk duct, cal ductal carcinoma, actually has a calcified milk duct. Lumpectomy, tamoxifen, seven weeks of radiation, 20 treatments on the breast, five on the cavity, three to four lymph nodes, CT, dye study, hacked both breasts off, done. We saved your life. So, me and the sisters tried holding back. Oh no, you can't hold back, you gotta plunge. So they plunged. I don't wanna be responsible, you know why? You know why? Because when I go home at night to relax, I watch three hours of lawyer commercials trying to tell me they're gonna sue me for every single thing. You don't know what this is like dodging these thieves for 36 straight years. And we know who you guys are because we share your names. You're gonna to get to see that Fatah guy because the good ones aren't gonna see you. Because I get to sit and watch the nonsense. Let's take all your money and give your kids a suitcase. Let's steal all your money and we'll pass the money around the neighborhood. Well, we're sick of the lawyers. We're sick of the system. And this entire mess, hopefully, you're not gonna have anybody doing anything because our legal system is completely corrupt. Let's all pony up some money and we'll leave you alone. You don't know what this is like. So this is what they do to you guys because that's what the system says to do. So she did it. 
Three years later, I'm looking at her blood work. She had a parathyroid out of range. She had a parathyroid tumor. She had unusual calcifications. They did all that for nothing because all she had to do was have a parathyroid tumor removed. You'll never see the cal... The, the, now, for you doctors, calcium, when the calcium's out of range, look at the parathyroid. You will start to calcify your body, and these are more and more common. So she takes all this back to the guy, the, the female doctor that did all this to her, and said, look, man, I had a parathyroid tumor. That's why I had those calcifications. It had nothing to do with cancer. And she looked at her and said, but that's what I was trained to do. You will hardly ever see the calcium out of range. Go straight to the parathyroid before this happens to you. That's huge. I had this old grandma in front of me, this fragile old grandma. This is, and she's sitting in front of me. And I walked in. She just got down with all this chemo radiation. She had her, all her organs taken out, and they wanted her back on estrogen. And I walked in. Why would you do that? And she said, thank you. I said, what do you mean? When she was done with all the treatment, they wanted her back on the drug that caused the cancer. And she said, you're the only one I've been to that said no. Everybody else said yes. And she, that's all she wanted to hear. Why would I even... This is the power they've held over you. I had to suggest no. She's like 74, 75. Power. Unbelievable. The guy that shut off his electric blanket and his leukemia went away. Wait till the 5G thing starts rolling through. That's going to be like living in a microwave. You better be healthy. Better take the right supplements because 5G is going to be rough. 5G is exactly what we walked around at the uh, airport. 5G. When I did that story with the guy with the sweating down at the palace, with that maple leaf goalie, when the coach looked at me, and they heard I was, you know, some kind of hot, you know, I had done some things. So when you go to these places, all right, smart Alec, do something cool with me. It's kind of the coach's attitude when I went down to the palace. So I got Steve standing in front of me, looking at this guy in probably jeans and a t-shirt that was overplayed to him as some big shot doctor, and I've not really looked the part. So I'm standing in front of this NHL goalie, and he looks at me, and he, I had fixed a bunch of these players, now I'm with him. And he said, all right, what is wrong with me? I said, you like bananas? And he just looked at me. I can't believe you said that. I said, why? He said, because I eat 13 bananas a day. My nickname in the NHL is the Banana Man. He played for the Chicago Blackhawks, and I can't believe you said that. I have a bunch of bananas in my car constantly. This is, um, this is a story for the doctors, how to read people. He said, how'd you know that? I said, well, you talk fast, you think fast, you poop fast, you move fast, you are so sympathetic dominant. It took 13 bananas a day just to keep you from coming unwrapped. He needed potassium desperately as a break to his body because he was neurotically stressed. That's all I said. You like bananas. And it was a huge, I mean, people, for the doctors, these are huge things that make people, oh my gosh, I've never had a doctor tell me about myself. They always ask 100 questions and give me a flu shot and a colonoscopy. <laughs> <clears throat> I can't believe what they peddled. But today I was asked, what's your opinion on vaccinations and did you vaccinate your kids? <laughs> the five or six year video videos are playing. Uh, the fluoride farm has been extremely successful. There you go. There's a big war story that I've repeated. That little girl was Tilly's size when I saw her about this big. Threw up everything in her life. One stop, one pull down, done vomited every single thing at this big. They could hardly speak English. Made a copy of that. They carried it around in their wallet. She never threw up again. The pediatrician made fun of me for fixing her. That kid threw up constantly. Projectile vomiting. She was born with a hiatal hernia right there. And so she came in, I got a picture, and all the Albanians came from her. So all of you in the waiting room, downstream it went. 
strong personality woman convince her that I didn't fix that kid when she never threw up again. Now the Americans would have, yeah, he probably didn't fix him. It was probably lucky. <laughs> Zona would hit them with a stick before. Today, do you get your kid shots? I said, only Americans. Only Americans would ask this. Pile of hernia. Simple stuff. Oh, a Kyle's picture. Huh? Yes. Next door neighbor. I, I had a picture of him on the phone at that funeral or that wedding we went to. Funeral, wedding, hopefully it works out. <laughs> I saw Kyle, he's this big, Mario Breck's son. They're up, they were in front. This was a cool story to my next door neighbor. So we move into Novi. There, this is a great story. So this guy was a real nice neighbor, Mario and Michelle. Cool story. So it's Halloween, they were the perfect neighbors to have. And we're over at their house in Halloween, all the kids are running around in costumes, and I'm wa walking through, I said, how's everything going? She said, oh, Kyle's sick. And I said, what's wrong with Kyle? She said, he's throwing up. He said, he throws up at soccer, he throws up at house, he can't eat breakfast anymore, he throws up on the bus, he's had an upper GI, he's had a lower GI, he said, he, they don't know what to do, they ran blood work. And as we're living next to them, as time goes on, Mario comes over and says, you know, a lot of people seem to know who you are, because he's, he's a printer. And as time went on, my name kept coming up. Who are you really? You know, it became like that, just my neighbor. So Halloween time, and I'm listening to Michelle tell a story about Kyle, and he'd been everywhere, and now he's got to go to U of M. They got to see a psychologist to see if somebody's playing with his junk. This kid, these kids running through the living room, now he's going to a psychologist to see if somebody's playing with him. That's the next step. And I'm like, you've got to be kidding. Yes. So they're running, the, him and the kids are running through the living room. I said, Kyle, come over here. I said, put your arm out. I said, lay on the floor. I got all these kids around. I laid them on the living room floor. I gave the gigantic, <clears throat> the same one I did on that little girl. <clears throat> done. It moved about this far. It felt like it moved that far. So, okay, you're done. I said, Mario, I fixed Kyle will be fine. I fixed him. And Mario, okay, stupid, crazy neighbor that probably left poop on the plumbing thing like the other guy did. So next day, Kyle gets up. I want to eat. And Kyle, it's soccer practice. And Mario says, what do you mean you want to eat? You know you're going to throw up at soccer practice. You can't eat. Well, so I'm hungry. Michelle said, look, Kent said he fixed him. Feed him. Why don't you, why don't you feed him? See what happens. They fed him, went to soccer. That it was probably Sunday. It was Sunday night. The phone rings. Mario's on the phone. What'd you do to Kyle? I said, I told you I fixed him. Well, said so you did fix him. This is all he was down to who's playing with my son. He had a hot yes, and Mario's like, for Pete's sake, no, he's playing with Kyle. Something's wrong with his stomach. This is where we're at today. This is everything. This is 36 years. So Kyle had a story. Projectile vomiting, done. One adjustment, a simple hiatal hernia. How do you do it? If you remember, ate a pizza, jumped on a trampoline. Dylan's had that happen before. <laughs> That's because of our active life. And I'm getting down to the crazy war stories. My dog. My dog. Dog. Now it's springtime. It's springtime. Springtime. My dog's eating the lawn. He's eating sticks. He's eating twigs. Took some PDCM, that, soaked it in beef jerky, quit eating the lawn in a day. Take a cap of that, water your flowers, because I know people that have done that and they've had gardens. Watch what a cap of that, one cap, once a week, three weeks. Do half the garden. Half. Watch what you could have did with your kids. One cap, once a week. Water the plants, half the garden. It will be embarrassing what minerals will do to half your garden. Experiment it. You will not believe. And when you did this, remember, your kids didn't have any minerals growing up. Just that one cap, you will not believe what will happen. And I have people that win awards doing that. Watch what happens to your flu. That's what minerals would do to your kids. Interesting, last couple of slides, last interesting patient comes in, Don, Captain, the Rangers, shot an x-ray on him, survives Afghanistan, 
And I looked at him. This is only because of this. He's a wonderful guy. I said, for Pete's sakes, you ever been shot with a BB? He said, matter of fact, I have. I said, well, you still got it in your head. <laughs> so, survived to Afghanistan, got the BB in the head. Now, the left went kind of far. If you think the right's going too far, there's a book called The Great Controversy you might want to read. If you think the right's going too far. There's no hell. A lot of people are awful excited in politics right now. The Republicans and Democrats are really happy right now. A lot of Washington people are breathing a huge sigh of relief because we've canceled hell. <laughs> now, my dad. My dad. You know, I got these funny headaches. I got these headaches. You know, I come to your lectures. You fix these people. My neck's always out. You got these, I got these headaches. Headaches. So I got to listen to that nonsense for five years. I go to lectures. You fix all these other people. You can't fix me. My eyes feel funny. I got these headaches. My neck's, all, your neck's always out. So five years into this, we put his glasses in backwards. Push your, your eyes feel funny. Your neck's always out. Your glasses are backward, you idiot. You should check that. So try to keep somebody's neck in place when their glasses are in backwards. That's the nursing home. Ray, are you depressed? Yes, Selexa. Now you're anxious and depressed, Clonopin. Then throw a Xanax in, a couple of Aleve. Love the attention of the medical doctors. Without me and my mother running interference for them, if Blue Cross paid for that, he was good to go. So to watch how quickly he went down the toilet, because he loved the attention that he got, they got to go and take his pills. My father would have followed anything in a white coat as most of them have. <clears throat> I put these huh, 95, 90, 30 year patients, take their pills, absolutely zero grief, probably can't even see the screen, some of my favorite patients. This is Lou, for you folks that have been around a long time, Lou's in Missouri now, he had a child, I told him I'd put his stuff up, <clears throat> virtual video appointments. I wanna thank all of you. By the time we do this next lecture again in, December, I'm surprised, I think we're going to have an interesting future. So everybody keep your eye on, pay attention to what's taking place. You learned a new guy today. What was his name again? Mike Rogers. Thank you all for coming. See you have a wonderful, safe summer, and I want you to think out there and move forward. Talk to you later.